Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday Summary from 4-Minute Books Written by Niklas Goch Read by Ian Pringle One Sentence Summary Ego is the Enemy reveals how a tendency that's hardwired into our brains, the belief that the world revolves around us and us alone, holds us back from living the life it makes us desire so much, what we can do to overcome it at every turn and how to achieve true greatness. Favourite quote from the author. Impressing people is utterly different from being truly impressive. Ryan Holiday Don't let Ryan Holiday's goatee remote farm life fool you. The man is a marketing mastermind. Having apprenticed under Robert Greene, who wrote The 48 Laws of Power, he went on to become director of marketing for American Apparel. He's pulled crazy PR stunts for big brands and authors, but three to four years ago, his focus shifted a lot. Since then, he's published three books about stoicism, lives a humble life in Texas and spends a lot of his time writing. Looks like he's learned how to keep his ego in check. Ego is the enemy, will help you do the same. Putting reins on your ego helps you in both good and bad times because you'll neither stress about failures nor let success turn you into a diva. Here are my three favourite ways to make it happen. 1. Be a perpetual student. It'll keep you modest. 2. Don't hog tasks at work. Be a team player. 3. Reflect honestly on your performance when you get surprising results. Ready to confront your biggest enemy within? Let's take your ego to church. Lesson 1. Think of yourself as an internal student to stay humble. How could we not start the summary of a book about Stoicism without a quote from one of the all-time greats? It is impossible for a man to learn that which he thinks he already knows. Epictetus I'm proud of my attitudes and habits towards life. I'm disciplined, spend very little of the money I'm earning, live a frugal life. I just know I'm going to win in life thanks to these. However, that sometimes leaves me thinking, there's not much left I can learn here. I won't change any of these things for a long time. Every time that thought crosses my mind, I call bullshit. It might be true that these basic principles won't change much, but there's a huge load of things for me left to learn when it comes to making money, writing, selling, relationships, other people. It's a never-ending process. Ryan suggests you think of yourself like many of the ancient Stoics did, an eternal student of life dedicated to learning as long as you live. This keeps you humble and encourages you to learn from the best in your field. However, it pays to look both up and down the chain. Take some time to mentor and teach others. Going back to beginners and helping them expose you to the full spectrum of skill levels is another way to restrain your ego. Lesson 2. Delegate tasks to learn to trust others. Have you ever held on to an incredibly dull task just because you thought no one else can do it better than you? I do this all the time, especially for repetitive to-dos. This not just inflates your own ego, it's a huge missed opportunity to build trust with the people you work with. Trust increases the speed of everything in a business. The more employees trust one another, the faster things get done. Delegating some of your work to others forces you to do two things. One, respect other people's work. Two, trust that they can get the job done. These aren't just ways to win against your ego, but can also be the difference between a thriving company and one that goes bust. For example, legendary American car manufacturer DeLorean may always be remembered for creating the car from back to the future, but due to its CEO's stubborn attitude of having to check every single detail, it went bankrupt after just seven years with less than 10,000 cars sold. Your turn. Can you come up with another example of a company that went bankrupt due to a lack of trust? For example... Lesson 3. Use unexpected results as inflection points to keep improving. Our ego has the tendency to blow everything out of proportion, both good and bad. Sometimes we get results which are a lot better than we expected, other times they're much worse. The ego ruins both of them. When you do a bad job, your ego will tell you it's not your fault and blame anything and anyone but you. Do a great job and it'll say you deserve every single ounce of credit, giving you a lot more than you probably deserve. Instead of letting these get to your head one way or the other, you can use them as inflection points to keep improving. Have a high? 
congratulate yourself, turn right back around and get back to work. Have a low, take responsibility, learn something and start moving up again. For example, this Quora answer recently took off for me. I could have commended myself for being such a great writer and rested on my laurels all week. Instead, I took one look at the rest of my answers, saw how many got zero traction at all, ordered a bunch of Ryan Holiday books so I could learn to write better, and then wrote some more. Take results only as what they truly are, a great opportunity to honestly reflect on your work. Nothing more, nothing less. Hey, this is Nick, the founder of 4-Minute Books, and I want to thank you so much for watching our video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe to the channel for more. You can also visit us at 4minutebooks.com for hundreds of free book summaries, each of which will make you smarter in 4 minutes or less. Thanks again, and always keep learning.